Hi everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and today I want to show you a bit of the technical information that you need to know when you are using the new robot embroidery frame. Now this is the guy we're talking about. Um, I'm not sure it's a robot, but that's what they call it. And uh, basically it clips on to the normal um, embroidery arm frame that comes on the six or the 10 needle machine. And uh, there's a few things you need to do uh, correctly and, and be aware of because they are quite different to any of the hoops that you have used in the past. But why would you want one of these embroidery frames, these robot frames? Uh, quite honestly, they allow you to clamp or, or hoop things that are pretty darn difficult in a traditional style hoop or even a magnetic hoop or, or a sticky back hoop. So uh, they've certainly got a place and I know we've got a few customers who we have pulled out of the pickle um, or got out of a pickle because this is the only way they were able to hoop the certain articles they were using in a, in a business sense. So to give you an idea of some things you could do with it, um, one of the most popular things would be um, the uh, dog collars and belts and so on. I'll show you that in a moment, but that's, that's really popular. Getting into little sports bags uh, like this guy here, clamping that little area in that pocket. Um, we'll show you how to do that. But I'll keep, we'll keep putting videos up over time of different things you can do, but if you're going to get one of these, it's very important to follow some rules. And um, that's what this video is all about. So let's start with that. Now, once you've switched your PR series machine on, generally it will start up with the machine in the exact center position. The first thing you'll need to do is to make sure that your machine is set for the 300 by 200 hoop frame. On a six needle machine, that is the largest position for your embroidery arm. On the 10 needle machine, it's the second largest position. And uh, that's using the A arm on both the, uh, the newer six needles and the 10 needle machines. So um, you'll work that out pretty quickly because the, the unit itself has a similar kind of sliding bracket that you'll find on your PR series hoops and it slides on. So most important, first thing you've got to do when you're using this frame, and I'll just go through a bit of a, a run through, you've, you've got these little clamping arms here that have got a, a non-slip sort of rubber uh, surface over the, um, the clamping pins, and they go into a recess just down on each of the, um, the bottom of the clamping, the clamping frames. They're extraordinarily well made, they're very, very beautifully engineered. Um, they're, they're relatively heavy, so um, be mindful of that. They're around about uh, four kilograms. No, not, not that much, about three kilograms, I think. Um, and they're adjustable. So these arms here can be adjusted by undoing the, the little thumb screw here and can be moved to any position on the slide. And, uh, and that's what makes it so handy. But what you've got to do when you're mounting this is, well, it's much easier to do this, is to make sure that the arms are basically out to the full extreme or near enough to. So both arms are way out. We've got all this space here and that makes it so much easier to put the arm on the machine. So what I'm going to do is uh, the machine is switched on. It's in its standard frame position as if you've just turned it on. If you've been using the machine and the, and the arm uh, the embroidery arm is in a, a sort of a weird position. Just clear all the memory, go back to home, position this back in the center. If you can't do that or you're not sure how to do it, turn the machine off and on again and that'll get it corrected for you without any, any problems. But you, you, by clearing everything, you should go back to home. Um, okay, so you've got this little screw here, which is important. So don't be moving that, leave it in place. Arms are out to the side. And so all you've got to do is then simply slide that gently under the the needles, uh, the, the presser feet, and then hook it on as if you would any other machine. Now the first, or any other hoop, the first thing you're going to notice is that it is, it is fairly heavy. It does put a fair bit of pressure pushing down here. It's not gonna hurt anything, but you just gotta be mindful that that is the case. And now that it's on and it's locked into place, I can now move these two side arms. Now the reason I've said you had to open this up before you put it on is it because if you had these arms in and I'll just undo this one and move it across in close doing a smaller object um, the the clamping mechanism will be in the way when you're trying to put the hoop uh, the robot frame onto the machine so that's why we start with them out to the side and then we set these once we've we've got it on and we dependent on what kind of um, article we're going to hoop now, of course, if you were uh, wanting to hoop this um, this little collar here, uh, well, I don't know, is it a collar? I think it is. Um, this one's already been embroidered and you can see there, 
we've embroidered across there. Now, typically hooping up something like that can be a little bit difficult, but all you need to do on this is just set your arms to a position that will allow you to get the product in to a, a nice position. Now, here's an important tip. It is super important that when the machine is stitching, so in this case, this design is, let me measure that, this design is going to be around about oh, six centimeters wide. I don't want the embroidery arm to be um, running up and, and, and climbing up over the free arm of the machine because you can imagine as this comes across, and in fact, if I just move that across there, if it gets too close to the arm of the machine, one, you're going to be stitching very close to it, but secondly, it can catch on the free arm just under here, and we don't want that happening. So I'm going to make sure, I always leave myself quite a space or as much space as I can, depending on what I'm hooping. So for instance, on this, um, this belt, uh, this uh, collar here or belt, all I need to do is put one side in, so I'm going to clamp that down. So you can see, that I'll try and keep my hands out of the way clamp it and then basically pull the other side fairly tight and clamp the other side and that is now clamped and it will stitch. Obviously make sure that the two thumb nuts are, are done up and uh, then it's just a matter of aligning your design and stitching as normal. So pretty darn simple to hoop up what otherwise is quite a difficult thing to do in a traditional hoop and this clamp will hold it beautifully and you you probably won't even need to use any stabilizer on something like this. So, so that's how you would do a, a, a whole plethora of different objects. And when you want to take it out, just undo the clamps and away you go. Um, you might have a, I don't know what this is, but it's a, um, some sort of curtain loop or something. Um, if I wanted to hoop this up, for instance, same deal. I could easily hoop this. It's quite thick. And again, just pull it nice and firm and then push the other the other side clamp down and I could embroider on that just as it is without having to do any more hooping. Really, really simple. Another question we get all the time is uh, can you embroider uh, shoes and boots? And the answer is yes. In fact, Brother do have a nice little set of clamps that are specifically designed for doing uh, boots and shoes, but you can also use this clamp and I'll quickly show you a classic example and things that you should be, be aware of. Now this is just a cheap little pair of you know, uh, gym type shoes. We've taken the shoelaces out and if we wanted to put little initials here, we could. The thing you've got to be mindful when you're using this clamping system is there are limitations and the limitations are based on the object you're about to embroider. In this case, the width of the shoe this way and the depth of the canvas here will be a extreme limitation. Now I've already calculated, I could probably put something about 35, 40 millimeters across here. I've got really not a lot of depth to go over here, but more importantly, I've got very little length to um, available to me. So, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to bring the, the um, arms in a wee bit closer first, and this will all make sense. So probably around about there. I've still got around about 40 mil. Um, yeah, about 40 mil from the edge of my arm to the free arm on the machine, and that's probably going to be okay. So I'm going to just nip up the, the thumb nuts there. Now, if I was going to do something on this shoe, I'd probably be doing it on the right side or the outside of the shoe, and I might just want to pop in a little set of initials there. What I've got to do is now mount this into the machine. Now, one of my limitations on this is going to be the width of this shoe and in fact, where the toe of the shoe is. Because when I put this back into the machine to embroider, if I try to push this shoe that, that way, this is going to hit the um, frame of the machine and it's not going to allow the hoop to move. So that is a significant limitation. Um, I could bring this arm across a wee bit. And part of the process for hooping with this mechanism is you do a bit of trial and error. So I've just brought it across a little bit, but remember, if I was stitching a design that was too long, I don't want the arm running up over the free arm of the machine. So I think I'm pretty good just there. So I'm just going to clamp that, try and get my arm out the way, there like that. And I'm going to clamp the other side. Now that's quite firm and I'm just going to get to my machine here for a minute. 
And I'm going to load a design. Now I've loaded some initials. I know you can't see the screen, but don't, don't worry about it. I don't want to get that to get in the way of the more important aspect here of, of positioning this design and things to be aware of. So I have got that design in there. Just going to center that, go edit end. And I really want my design to stitch down just here. So here, now I can just move this down. I can already see right now where I'm hooped, the toe of the shoe is going to foul on the arm of the machine. So something's not right for me. What that means is I need to get the shoe moved back over this way. So I'm just going to release that clamp and I'm going to push this arm in a bit further. I'm going to release this clamp and I'm going to move this across. Again, it is just a bit of trial and error. There's no absolute right or wrong way to do any of this. The beautiful thing of this machine, of course, too, is I have a, um, an LED light on it. So now let's see if I can move my... There, you can see, hopefully you can see that on the camera. The uh, LED pointer there, that is currently uh, the top left of the design. So I'm just going to center that. That's currently the center of the design. And I really want the design to go back a wee bit that way. So we're just going to come back to there. Um, that's pretty much where I want the initials of the design to stitch. Now, on these machines, uh, again, you can't see it, but you can use your needle position functions to see where the extremities are. So I've gone to the left-hand side of the design, and I can tell you my shoe has again hit the, the um, side of the machine. So I need to go back to center, and I probably need to go back the other way a bit. So now if we go and check the left-hand position. Yeah, pretty good now. My shoe's just touching. It's not going to cause any problems. If we go to the right-hand position, there's my right side of the design. So I, I know that's going to work. I could check the bottom of it. That's fine. If, if I had my shoe too far in, the free arm would hit the sole of the shoe and it would want to push the frame out of position. It's not. It's fine. And that's the top of the, the design there. So there's a, it's going to stitch a lovely little set of initials just in there. And, um, and as you can see, that's, that's what you've got to do. You've got to make sure, in fact, I'm going to take my design whoops, up a little bit further. And you'll see why in a minute. So let's just go and double check our positions. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And that's good. I don't do a trace of the design. Um, I don't do a trace of the design when I'm setting this because if I let it do a trace, it's going to force the hoop to move. So I actually choose my independent needle positions, um, so which you can do. And uh, I know you can't see it, but um, I'll, I'll, I will try and I'll try and get it here. It's a screen that um, all the six needles and ten needle machines have. If we click OK to there. It basically is this little symbol here. Hopefully you will be able to see it. I think that little symbol there, and then I can actually position it at any point of the extremity of the design. And I know that's going to work. So, um, so that's all there is to that. Uh, we'll quickly stitch this design out, I think. Um, I think I've got a bobbin case in there. And I'm going to do that with, uh, let me see, we'll go with, um, I think blue. Blue looks pretty good. So that's needle one. It's on needle one already. That's fine. So if I hit the lock button, it's only going to take a few moments. We're good to go. Now I've not used any stabilizer on this. There was no real need for that. Okay, so there we have it. That's just quickly stitched out those initials. Let me stop that machine from making that noise. That's quickly stitched out those initials. It was really simple. It was just a, a little bit of a um, little bit of messing around to get the right position on a difficult object like this, but you can do it. And I'm sure if you looked around your home, you'll have loads and loads of items that you've wondered in the past. Oh man, how would I hoop that? Well, this robot frame would probably solve the problem. So to take that out now that it is all done, we just release the clamps and the shoe will come out, and that's all embroidered. Kind of nice there, HML. Um, well, I don't know whose initials that is, but that worked anyway. Now, to get the frame off the machine, it's really important to 
uh, follow the same protocols, kind of in reverse. So make sure you undo the, the two little slide uh, nuts there. Move this out to the sides. And then, like any other hoop, you just release it and take it off like so. And that is it, guys. So um, uh, loads of opportunities with uh, the robot frame. It is very, very, very well engineered. They're, they're not cheap. They're, they're, they're a well-made product. Um, I'd love to say they're made in Australia. They're not. They're made in Korea, actually. Um, but their engineering is superb. And uh, I think a lot of people will find loads of uses. And particularly for business operators who are always getting all sorts of challenges presented to you, the robot frame could be a godsend. So uh, hope that helps. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. And cheers for now.